Welcome, soccer friend, to the magical world of soccer bedtime stories, where dreams and goals come together. I'm your host, Tomek, and I'm here to accompany you on a journey through the stories of some of the greatest players, games, and tournaments as you drift off to sleep. If this is your first time visiting our soccer dream world, and you enjoy the story, we welcome you to follow and subscribe to listen to all the stories in our library. If you are a returning soccer dreamer, we encourage you to review, comment, star, and like the stories you love most. Your feedback and ideas help us get better and help to expand our soccer dreaming community. Please reach out to us. It's as easy as a pass to a friend. You can just email us at soccerbedtimestories at gmail.com. Enjoy the story. Sleep well and dream big. Hello there. As we embark on our adventure, soccer friend, let's take a deep breath, snuggle up in a cozy blanket, surround ourselves with warmth and comfort. Tonight's story is one that will transport us to a magical world where anything is possible. We meet heroes, some villains, travel to far off lands, and experience incredible adventures together. So let's close our eyes, relax, and get ready to embark on an unforgettable journey that will fill our dreams with wonder and excitement. Records, records everywhere. The game was set for that magical city in France, for the city of the Eiffel Tower, Notre Dame, Wolham Bread, and walks on the Champs Elysees. The historic location would host two historic teams in Liverpool and Real Madrid, both playing to rewrite history and set new records. Paris would be the host of the 2022 Champions League final. In the grand tapestry of football history, Liverpool Football Club found themselves at the threshold of their 10th European Cup. It was a moment that resonated within the echoes of triumphs past and the sting of defeats that had left indelible marks on their journey. Six times before the club had ascended to the pinnacle of European glory, lifting the coveted trophy in 1977, 1978, 1981, 1984, 2005, and most recently in 2019. Yet, there were scars too. The bitter memories of three finals that slipped through their grasp in 85, 07, and 2018. Each a chapter of heartache etched into the annals of their legacy. Guided, guiding the story team was the enigmatic Jurgen Klopp. Football sage with a knack for turning dreams into reality. For him, this wasn't just another final. It would mark the fourth occasion that he had orchestrated his team's dance on the illustrious stage. The memories were a mosaic. The bitter taste of loss with Dortmund in 2013, the spirited campaign that fell short against Real Madrid in 2018, and the sweet, sweet redemption of the 2019 triumph. But Liverpool's journey transcended the confines of one tournament. Their European escapades were woven into the very fabric of the club's identity. A lost battle in the European Cup's Winter Cup final in 66 lingered in the shadows, a distant reverberation of the time when the trophy eluded them. Four UEFA Cup finals further colored their narrative. Triumphant marches in 73, 76, and 01 interspersed with the bitter taste of defeat in 16. Klopp, the maestro, maestro at the helm, bore the weight of not just titles, but the aspirations of a nation of a collection of passionate Scouse supporters. He stood on the precipice with the chance to etch his name as the fourth consecutive German manager to orchestrate a Champions League victory. 
On the opposite side of Destiny's stage stood Real Madrid. Perennial giants with a legacy that cast a shadow longer than most. Their presence marked their astonishing 17th European Champions League final. The memories flowed like a river 13 times that they had hoisted the trophy high and owed to their enduring dominance. Yet the ghosts of three finals past haunted them. Reminders that even the grandest narratives could be punctuated by the agony of defeat. Carlo Ancelotti, the mastermind behind this Madrid machinery, was no stranger to the Grand Theater. His journey had led him to this summit for the fifth time, an unprecedented feat. The echoes of victory in 2003 and 7 with Milan resonated in the corridors of time, a counterpoint to the bitter taste of 2005's loss to his current nemesis, Liverpool. And then there was the 2014 conquest with Real Madrid, a testament to his artistry. For Ancelotti, the final wasn't just about titles. It was about writing his name and the stars as the first manager to claim four Champions League titles and eight European trophies. Real Madrid's saga was a symphony that extended beyond the Champions League, the melodies of European Cup winners' finals, and then there were the twin triumphs of the UEFA Cup finals of 85 and 86, a testament to their enduring excellence. Liverpool's journey to the final was punctuated by an attempt at an unprecedented quadruple, winning the two domestic cups, but they would fall short in the league by a solitary point. This marked their third year, an exclamation mark on a season where they had played every single game, overcoming Villarreal, Inter, and Benfica in the knockout rounds. Liverpool looked to make history. Real Madrid were no strangers to making history. For them, a victory would extend their record of Champions League titles. Having comfortably won La Liga, the path to the final in Paris was more treacherous. Powers, powerhouses Paris, Saint Germain, Chelsea, and Manchester City all stood in their way. A dramatic comeback in the second leg against Manchester City gave the Spanish giants an opportunity to win a 14th title. As the final drew near, the stage was set for a clash of giants, each with their tales of triumph and turmoil, their managers seeking their own places in history. It was more than a game, it was the culmination of a lifetime of dedication, the climax of narratives woven by heroes and heartbreaks. The echoes of the past mingled with the promise of the future, painting the canvas of football with strokes of glory and the hues of eternal pursuit. As the much-anticipated match finally commenced, the clock had been set back and the first whistle blew at the unconventional hour of 9.36. The colossal stadium swelled with a sea of 75,000 fans, their collective energy electrifying the atmosphere. In the 16th minute, a moment of promise emerged Trent Alexander-Arnold, the master of the right flank, orchestrated a delicate dance with the ball, curating its path across the Real Madrid penalty area. The ball found its way to the gifted feet of Mohamed Salah, who unleashed a strike aimed at destiny's net. Yet the towering figure of Thibaut Courtois, Real Madrid's guardian between the posts, stood resolute, as it would for much of the match. Thwarting the attempt, and thus marking the first shot of the evening. A mere five minutes later, the narrative took an intriguing turn. Thiago Alcantara, the orchestrator of Liverpool's midfield symphony, threaded a pass that seemed to defy the very laws of physics. Sadio Mane, a conjurer of magic on the field, embraced the ball and created space out of thin air. Shot a testament to precision and power, carried the dreams of millions by Coutoir, Yet again, the sentinel of Madrid's ambitions responded with an acrobatic save, the ball kissing the left post in a fleeting moment of suspense. At the first half journeyed into its heart, 
the 34th minute unveiled another chapter of Liverpool's artistry. Alexander Arnold once again unfurled his weapon of choice, a precisely placed cross that carved a path towards Salah. The Egyptian king, with a leap that seemed to defy gravity, aimed a header at the goal's embrace. And destiny screamed, demanded a twist, and the ball found itself traveling straight into Coutois' waiting arms. As the first half wound down, a surge of anticipation cursed through the stadium. Just two minutes remained before the break, and the stage was soon to be graced with an unexpected moment. Karim Benzema, winner of the Golden Ball, a maestro in white, embarked on a determined sprint towards the heart of Liverpool's territory. The ball found its way to his feet, a loyal companion under his spell. With a deft touch, he sought to orchestrate a pass that would rewrite the course of the story. Yet, Ibrahima Konate, the sentinel of the Liverpool defence, stood vigilant, intercepting the intended trajectory with a timely intervention. Fate struck again. Amidst the orchestrated chaos, a tangle of moments unfolded. A dance of confusion commenced between Liverpool's guardians, a mix up that summoned Federico Valverde of Real Madrid to seize the opportunity. Liverpool's Fabinho was thrust into action, a reluctant protagonist in this unforeseen drama. In the midst of this intricate choreography, the ball found its way back to Benzema, as if drawn by a magnetic force. With the precision that only moments like these demand, he dispatched the ball into the net, igniting the crowd into a symphony of celebration. The symphony was short-lived, as the assistant's ref assistant referee's flag was aloft, a signal that cast a shadow over the euphoria. The realm of technology and scrutiny represented by the VAR assumed its role for three minutes and twenty seconds. The narrative hung in the balance. The screen's gaze traversed the events, dissecting each movement, each heartbeat, and then a decision emerged from the ether of uncertainty. The goal, once celebrated, was denied. Benzema's position had transgressed the borders of offsides, a flag raised against his moment of glory. Controversy swirled, swirled like a tempest, the touch of Fabinho's boot under scrutiny. Was it a touch of intention, a deliberate nudge that set the dominoes in motion, or was it a mere puppetry of fate, a touch that bore no intention beyond chaos? As debates raged, opinions diverged, and the echoes of the whistle signaled an end to a half painted with drama. In the midst of this intricate dance between men and moments, the match descended into intermission. The stage was now set for the second act, where heroes and history would collide once again, Decisions made and unmade reverberating in the hearts of players and fans alike. As the stadium lights shimmered and the second half commenced, both sides stood resolute, unchanged in their composition from the first act. Liverpool, spurred by the embers of their first half endeavors, stepped onto the field with a sense of continuity. Merely nine minutes into this new chapter, Frank Arnold Alexander resumed his role as the orchestrator of precision. This cross, akin to Picasso's brushstroke on the canvas, found the realm of Tiago's anticipation. The ball danced towards the waiting hands of Tiago until Cotois, Real Madrid's last line of defense, intervened with a defiant punch, extinguishing the possibility. But in football, as in life, the script can twist in an instant. Against the rhythmic flow of the game in the 59th minute, Madrid carved their own stanza in this unfolding ballad. Federico Valverde embarked on a journey down the right flank, the ball his loyal companion. With a low cross, he penned a pass towards Vinicius Jr. who stood unmarked in the penalty area. With the grace of a poet's quill, Vinicius tucked the ball into the net, leaving Allison, Liverpool's guardian, stranded on the opposite shore. The stadium erupted in a symphony of cheers and gasps as Madrid defied the rhythm of the game to claim the lead. 
Fabinho was now entered into the referee's book with a yellow card in the 62nd minute. This challenge, the contention added another layer to this tapestry of the match. As the minutes wore thin, Liverpool surged with determination. Salah, a magical artist in his own right, attempted to weave with a shot from the edge of the penalty area. Coutois, the formidable guardian, once again parried the attempt to his right, a testament to his unyielding vigilance. In the 65th minute, Liverpool Symphony underwent its first transformation. Luis Diaz yielded his place to Diego Jota, a change that sought a harmonious crescendo and a potential comeback. The ball once again danced through the air, a header by Jota aimed towards Salah until Coutinho intervened his presence. Once more, a testament to Madrid's resolute defense. Madrid, too, made their mark on the match with set pieces. A free kick by Tony Cruz in the 75th minute ignited a brief spark of opportunity. Casemiro sought to continue the tale to play the balls, but Andrew Robertson, Liverpool's defender, collect- collected this narrative and stopped the attack. With 77 minutes on the clock, new players entered the match Thiago and Henderson exited the stage, making way for Nabi Keita and Robert Firmino. The symphony was transformed, each note resonating with its unique cadence. Salah continued his quest to Shah, the collaboration with Firmino, sought the net's embrace, yet the ball bore the impact of Joda's touch, altering its trajectory. Coutois, a vig- guardian vigilant till the end, made a save that would be etched into the tapestry of this match. One of many for Coutois on this night. With minutes dwindling, Salah persisted. A ball from Fabinho painted the path. Salah fought against Ferland Mendy's defense. But once again, Madrid's hopes were lifted by their sentinel in the back. As the match hurled towards its final moments, the fourth official un- unveiled the five additional minutes. Madrid made changes too, Valverde play, re- yielding his place to Eduardo Camavinga. Time would prove to be the ultimate maestro of this drama. Conducted the final movements. Madrid made their remaining cha- changes. Ceballos replacing Modric. Vinicius leading, yielding to Rodrigo. And despite Liverpool's valiant efforts, the curtain descended with the Madrid as victors, 1-0. Their solitary goal, a tale that would echo through the corridors of Champions League history, through the corridors of time. In the magical city of Paris, where dreams seem to touch the sky like the Eiffel Tower, Liverpool and Real Madrid taught us eternal lessons. They showed that in the world of football and beyond, Even the tiniest moments can change everything. A single touch of a ball or a quick decision could be the difference between a victory or defeat. In life, our choices and actions, those quick decisions, let us determine our fate. The match reminded us to never give up and reminded us that when we work really hard, even if we don't win, we learn. Both teams taught us that teamwork dedication and spirit to keep going are what truly make winners and champions both in the game of football in our beautiful soccer and in the game of life sleep well and dream big soccer friend Hey soccer friends, if you enjoy soccer bedtime stories, you might also enjoy the Soccer Time Machine podcast. It is a soccer history daily for kids, by kids. Join our young soccer fans on an epic adventure through the history of the beautiful game. From legendary players to historic moments, 
We'll explore it all in a fun and engaging way that's perfect for young soccer fans like you. So grab your jerseys and get ready to kick off this exciting journey with the Soccer Time Machine podcast on August 1st, wherever you listen to podcasts. Subscribe and follow to make sure you don't miss an episode. Now, off to our bedtime story, Sweet Soccer Dreams.